So we're here to solve this challenging balance loop variation by Sirkhan. It's got an interesting black exterior, white interior theme. I actually see, I'm gonna start on the bottom just because of these fours and threes. They're uh, forced clue distributions, one plus three or one plus two. And so we can mark some of these things in. This four, for instance, needs to take three cells in some direction. It can't come to the left because it's gonna use up all that space. So it's gotta take three up to the top. Um, that actually marks that this has to be down, so it forces this one and three to look like this. And like this. It's going to have to turn. Um, coming back, see, let's look in this corner now. Uh, these sevens are fairly large. This seven can take only three cells to the left at max. It could take as little as one, but it takes somewhere between one and three. And that means it takes at least four coming straight down. The seven can take as many as three in this column. So it's got to take a four, fifth, six. So we're going up four over to the left is what it needs to do. Note that that really makes this stretch in the first row hard to come across. If this three came over two cells, it has to turn, which it can't do. So the two long section has to be to the right. And similarly, the one can't come to the left. It's got to come straight down. So this is two plus five. And this is one plus six. And uh, we finished marking those off. This five comes down, takes a cell in both of those spaces. Looks like this is the first time we're gonna shift over to star battle logic. And it may be tricky in solving this puzzle because these are two fairly different styles to see one to do that. But the second row has three white cells, two that are together. So one star is gonna be there and one that's on its own, and that's going to be a star in the far right. If one of these is a star, the three's long section can't be two to the right here because we we'll go over the star. So the two long section has to be coming down. We should now think how do we place uh, the necessary three long section around this four. Note that if the four comes straight down like this, it's gonna force the three to have a vertical section up and down, and that means both of these cells will be part of the loop and there's no space for the star. So the four can't have its section come down, and because this whole thing is basically an isolated channel, it also can't come to the right. So this comes to the left. We've gotta figure out if this five takes one more cell here to be two plus three, but if it were two, it couldn't extend. So it's one and four, and this is a fully horizontal clue for the four. We can mark this as a wall. We should now think about maybe this five clue, and it will help to think in general about all the center sections now with fours and twos. Um, the four uh, is gonna have two in a direction and two in another direction, potentially all four in the same direction, although they can't cross with any of these white cells when they do that. But importantly, two fours that are adjacent can't go through each other. You can't be two to the right with a, a cell that it, in a, that's right adjacent will be a different parity. This would be like one and three if this were two and two. So there's an edge here that's not crossed and the edge here that's not crossed. But another thing to then see is like for this five, it can't come all the way over to this four. It can take as many as two cells, but it can't take the third because you'd have to do this and that's uh, no good. It also would have more than two cells coming out from the four. So this takes as many as two cells. Um, this other direction can only take one. It's got to take three to the, the bottom. The, this will be the longest section that the loop can take. And they're going back to star battle quickly. Only four cells left in this column to take. But there's a fun deduction, it looks like, right around this corner. One of these ends is a one and the other is a three. And whichever is a one, it's going to turn into this space. It's going to do this or it's going to do this. And so this is part of the loop. And if that's part of the loop, these are stars. And the loop's got to go like there. This part of the loop doesn't come both down to the left. One of its faces comes over to the right, which should help us a bit. Um, let's see if we can make that deduction stick uh, for something permanent. I think the way it's going to stick is if we see what happens if this connects up, this will take uh, one plus four. 
the four can't come through this three clue and the four also can't come over to this clue. And so this can't extend up. It's got to come over instead. This is the, the one, this is the three. This turns up, the five has to turn up. That's now finished the loop up to there. We get all this marked off now. Uh, the next set of things to do, looks like there are two places we can really make progress based on some star battle logic. I'll just mark the way I tend to do this in a regular puzzle. This is not a fully constrained set. Um, the star has effectively three cells it can see, so there's not so much that's eliminated by it, but um, with whichever of the options that this ends up using, I see that I can't take the loop through this space because I'd fully pass through and eliminate all three of the cells in this bottom option. And so this comes over and this comes over. And that's one star battle deduction we can make right now. And the other comes from seeing that in this bottommost row, we also have that same scenario where in five cells, we have two one by three groups that are going to contain stars. And in a normal star battle puzzle, you can uh, mark as unused by a star any cell that's touching the center of a one by three space because it would eliminate all of these as spots. And so in the second row from the bottom, there are two cells left that can be a star right now. It's a pretty hard deduction, but hopefully a clear deduction. And that actually forces the bottom row completely too. And I'll just mark off for my own visual notes where I finished uh, columns. This third column also looks pretty constrained right now. It's got a space for a star right here and a space that's gotta be up above for the star that's marked. This three needs to have a leg of one and a leg of two. So that's gonna be this. This column now looks really constrained. It's got just one more star, space for a star. This column between them, white, white, white. I can't put a star here and I can't put a star there. So I've got an option here, an option there, and it forces an option here. So star battle eliminations and avoiding no diagonal touching is playing out right now in this puzzle in a large way. These loop ends are gonna have to come through, keep themselves from touching. So this comes to the right, this comes to the right. This has to continue going this way. This four now has to come up and right. And so this turns, that means this comes down, this comes over. This four can't come straight up because it would end up being three long and we can only have sections that are too long that come off of it. So it's like this. This end to avoid the star is gonna complete power loop like this. This four needs a one and a three. You can only take two cells up. So it's gotta take three cells to the right. You'd strand the loop if you came over here. So um, this looks uh, very forced. This looks like a pretty tricky spot um, for what's next. There's a little bit of star battle deduction where like one star is somewhere over here. And given this loop is gonna turn, that's probably something to watch out for. We've got a star in one of those cells, but that's not very valuable. A thing that is usually useful in a balanced loop is when you have a situation like this, where you've got a, a circle clue that now only has three directions left for it, it can be useful to think around those three directions because they can almost sketch in your mind what all those options are and what they will influence. One of these actually looks pretty constraining where it's gonna force another T-shape here and a T-shape here. But I think this is the, this is the one of these two clues that right now has something I can say straight away about it. And that's to say there's no form of this clue that looks like up and right. Um, if this takes one cell only up here, that's no good. The only way this clue works is to take these cells together. So this four has two coming down or to take these two cells and not touch the four and therefore not cause a violation of the length of the four. And so while there are two options left for the two, both of them take this cell coming straight down and that marks this wall. And that means this three here can't come over one more cell because it has to turn immediately and turn into the wall. So this does this, the three turns up here. That means this part of the loop turns up here. Now it looks like what I was saying that this row has just one space left for a star. Uh, sorry, it needs one more star, but it has two spaces for it. 
if these loop ends avoided each other, one came left and one came right, you'd mark off both of these cells and there's no place for the star in the row. So these loop ends come together. And now I'm thinking that we're gonna run into a circumstance where uh, this whole part of the loop is pretty closed off and we're gonna have a, an issue likely if, if this came to the right, what would happen is this four comes up, this section comes over so uh, this loop end is gonna have to come back and connect or be stranded. Um, hopefully you can see that. Let me sort of sketch it all in in pencil. I'll end up having to erase it. But if this comes up, four over to here, this is over here and like so, and this, this loop connects to itself. So there's a hardish deduction that the four comes straight down. That now means this uh, part of the loop comes over. We now still have to make some deductions here, and I think some reason for what we're gonna end up seeing is gonna be tied to thinking about this central two clue. There are two ways it goes. Uh, one is it comes straight up like this, and if it comes straight up like this, this two comes over like so, this four comes here, we've got some other stuff that happens. If it comes across, then recognize that what it has to do very quickly is turn in both of these spaces. And so if it's got a turn in those spaces, um, one thing you'll see is that first, uh, this four above uh, is gonna have to uh, take a vertical section if it didn't. So if uh, this all came across, the two came down here, the four wouldn't have enough spaces to go. So if this, if this is like this, effectively see that you form this shape that moves this over, that moves this down, and this four still comes to the left. So if, if this is vertical or horizontal, this four comes to the left um, as a force consequence. There's probably a better way in colored pencils to show this section as critical. Um, there's probably a different way to show it. It wouldn't work if it went to the right, but it takes a little bit more time to show. So seeing that like this two is special gets us the fact that this four has to come left and that's gonna be a, a key factor in the stage of the solve in part because it comes up, this has to now connect to be part of the loop. This forces this four to come uh, up and right. We've now got a situation where we've got uh, some limited spaces for where stars go in um, these columns, I think that's gonna play out soon. One thing is we see that this four can't come to the left anymore. It can't come both up and down, so it's gotta have something to the right, and then it does do one of these directions. A, if this comes down and to the right, like this, note that it, it's gonna end up taking both of these sections and pin the, the four, so. This is something it's got to do. We now have this column with two spaces for stars. Um, this column is left right here with this necessary star. This whole, I, I, guess, I guess I missed this after I moved this uh, to the left. Um, this whole part of the loop comes to here. So these are adjacent ends and they have to dodge each other. So that's giving some fast progress. Finally, uh, this three has to take a section that's at least too long and that can't be left up or right, it's only down. So this uh, is an end that the loop takes. We're gonna need to mark off the final stars, I think to get um, the last part of progress in this grid. And some of that's gonna be seeing first this row now only has two spaces for stars. That leaves this row with just this space for a star. And so these clues together work to mark this off as the star containing spot. We've gotta get one more star in this column and it's gotta be in one of these cells. We have to get a star in this space, two stars total, not in this uh, cell. 
we have uh, this this column has just three options left for it. This has more, actually this column is now very limited. Once we know a star is here, we've got an option and a second option, which is very limiting. That places a star down here, which now is going to mark these off. We've got these columns now finished. We've got this to go and still this column to go. It's not up here, so there's a star here and a star in one of these cells. We've marked this now in our notes, so it's pretty good. Um, the two here force this star above. So the loop's going to come like this. Um, this has to take a star on the top spot since all the others are now eliminated. Put a star down here so all the stars are in the grid. And that's the last loop section. So a really challenging puzzle. It almost was a full five stars, and maybe it does deserve that because there is a, a bit of a challenge really in the midsection of getting through these white parts. But a lot of the start was just using balanced loop logic for these long pieces, getting a fair amount of the top and left of the grid done, shifting to see how stars were limiting in these spaces and these spaces. But it was really starting to work for me, at least in this lower right corner, where these two ends were pretty close. And you had a situation like this to clue in white that had to take a vertical section. It could take another in either other direction. But this vertical section started to limit this three clue. And then that started to limit the rest of the clues around it. And uh, a, a tricky deduction, maybe there's another way to get about it, but a tricky deduction that regardless of which way this two goes, this four must go to the left, and that then has these ends avoiding itself. This got us through the middle and into the upper right of the puzzle, and then just placing the last stars got us through to the end. So uh, whether this was uh, every part of the intended solve or a whole lot of the intended solve, it was a, a, a way to prove this has one solution. So I hope you learned a little bit about the puzzle and how to switch between these very different styles of loops and stars. And uh, we'll see you again soon.